Today we've got to do some tank maintenance and not on this tank, on this tank. This here is my six foot Lake Tanganyika, an African cichlid tank. And I cleaned this algae off this glass only one week ago. It is doing a very good job at growing back. I've been having the blinds up in here and I just like the atmosphere a lot better when the sun can come in and I think it's better for my little parallel that I've got and everything. I know that I might be asking too much to ask to have a lot of light and no algae, but I'm sure we can figure something out. I'm gonna try and maybe turn the lights down a little bit and see if that works, but I just find too that whenever I set up a new tank, sometimes it just goes through ugly phases like this and it takes a little while for the tank to establish and for things to balance out. So I think it's getting better. I'm holding on to hope that it's not gonna stay this bad. I'm going to clean this off and then we've got another issue in here which is cyanobacteria it's different to the algae that you can see on the glass it's actually a type of bacteria that is in the tank that grows more along the substrate and you have to actually get stuff to get rid of that which is what I got from Mad Aquariums last week but we'll go ahead and we'll do that and I'll give you a little bit of an update just on the guppy pond patio pond I've got set up outside too because today I also want to go and do some maintenance on that and get a little round bowl I'm thinking to stick in there so we're gonna to hop to Mappin's Aquariums which is local to me here so let's clean this so you can actually see the fish in the tank oh, it is a beautiful rainy day today now my tanks are inside but we're going to come outside and I'm going to give you a bit of an update on this little patio pond. As you can see, I've got some little flowers here, which is pretty. So the sword plant that we've got sitting in there, uh, immersed has actually been growing these. In last week's video, what we did was I cleaned this out and filled it back up with water. Uh, we've got some fish swimming up in here now because they're getting excited, but our water level has actually dropped down. Now, I don't know why this is happening. I think that possibly what it could be is maybe it's because of the silicone in the tank, maybe. Maybe the air is getting through. I'm not sure if that would make sense or if that was happening if the water would just completely just end up dropping out of there. But what I want to put in here is I want to put a small round bowl. I'd want the aesthetic look of the round bowl. I just think that that would look really nice in here. Not only will it look nice and not take up as much space in here, but we won't have to worry about it if it is the silicone that is letting some air into it. That's just my theory anyway. Basically at this Mappin's Nursery place they've got a lot of stuff for, they've got a lot of indoor plants and stuff but they've also got this nice little aquarium section and when I I went there I saw they've got heaps of stuff for vivariums and terrariums but first before we do that I'm gonna clean this algae off so we can have a good look at the cyanobacteria let's get this cyanobacteria actually siphoned out a doses tank Nigel from Aquarium Central actually got some rainbow trophies in a little while ago I've got two varieties I think or three maybe so I've got mainly these yellow ones these golden firefox trophies and then I've got some red ones as well and I think I've got a couple that have like a yellow stripe on them but I would really love to get the rainbow ones they're so beautiful and since everything is going well in here we're hopefully going to get some of those soon uh, Nigel can potentially order them in because they had some recently but I just didn't get on top of getting them but that's going to be another reason too that I want to get that quarantine set up so that we can add them into that. Just had a look in Mappin's nursery don't close until 5 p.m. and it's about 2 40 right now so we do have time to just give this a really quick little scrub and get that cyanobacteria siphoned out. So this algae in here as well it is not harmful to the fish whatsoever it is actually kind of good for them because it removes some of the excess nutrients and nitrates which is the waste in the water that the fish creates it's the end of the nitrogen cycle so when they poo they make ammonia it goes to nitrites then nitrates which plants can benefit from and these type of fish too especially the trophies like the little yellow ones that I was talking about and the red ones they actually really like to eat algae because they're almost herbivores they can eat some meats but they really like to have a primarily uh, veggie like oops, oops. Um, veggie algae based diet so they like to nibble on that they can't eat all of it I don't have plecos at the moment because I just am mindful that it's a really high pH and I do have them in my other African cichlid tank but those Malawi cichlids the pH is not quite as high I just kind of want to see 
I don't know, I'm not in a rush for anything because really at the end of the day, I, I'm not gonna say I enjoy scraping algae off, but I also just enjoy maintaining my tanks and I like having it just as that background kind of slow process as I do things. On social media, you might see a tank and it's just really incredible, but you may not see the amount of time that got put into that tank to get it where it is and the maintenance and stuff and how it started out, which is similar to my Lake Malawi tank. It's a beautiful tank, but I've been growing those fish out for a long time. That tank existed for like a year and a half, I think, before it ever even got put on social media. People kind of missed like some of the ugly stages that that went through. Like it went through this really gross brown algae stage it had it has like some black bead algae right now but it used to have a really weird algae in there that just didn't look nice at all so just thought I'd, I'd point that out you can see here all of this green stuff is cyanobacteria I did siphon out a lot of it last week when I did a water change so there's not as much you can kind of see it along the sand just here I've got this little red cyano stuff and we're gonna try and use this to get rid of the green cyanobacteria that's in there. This is actually for salt water tanks, but Jack from Mad Aquarium said that it works for the green cyanobacteria too. We need to try and siphon out as much of the cyanobacteria as possible and then get a cup of aquarium water out and mix one scoop of this stuff for every 10 gallons or 37 liters. We also aren't meant to dose it in the evening when the light is turned off. And also this product is not intended for human consumption. So do not try and eat this. I actually have my lights only, they only came on like a couple hours ago. It's about two in the afternoon here. And I let them go on later and then I get them to go off late at night too, like around 11 PM. So it kind of is like the morning for these lights in this tank anyway. So I think that let's dose it today and then probably next week when I do a video I can update you and tell you how it's gone. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to get rid of all of that algae on here. These are my first ever noise cancelling headphones and I think they're just like the best thing ever. About half an hour later we are algae free. Now we're going to have to move quickly because it's already 3.30 and I want to leave here by 4 to get to the nursery because they close at 5. So that green film right there that you can see all over the sand that's the cyanobacteria that you need to use treatment to get rid of so we're going to go through and we're going to get all of that out as much as what we can with the siphon and just try and suck as much of that out as we can i don't know what this is maybe like some weird algae or something but i found this in the tank so if anyone knows what that is can you let me know I've just never seen anything like it before. It was so weird. So because my math skills are painful, I calculated off camera how much of this I need. And we need 17 level teaspoons all together. And I'm just gonna use a spoon to level it um, each time that I pop it in. But so, one. It is so tiny. I didn't expect this spoon to be so tiny. 17. All right, all done. So we'll give it a little bit of a mix as well. Definitely doesn't discolor the water like the Blue Planet one I used did. It's just like it smells a little bit chemically, which makes sense, I guess. I'm gonna pour our treatment in there. Well, let's just put this in and hopefully it'll work. The good thing is it's just about to be four o'clock. So that's gonna give us about half an hour or so to get in there, have a look, see if we can find a little round bowl and we can let this clear, clear up while we're gone. So you can see there's still a little bit. I siphoned out as much as I could, but there's still a bit left. I'm not sure if that's cyano or a different type, but at least I don't have plants because this bacteria really gets all over plants and covers them and suffocates them. Alrighty, so we're at the aquarium place now. So Mappin's Aquarium in Brisbane, and we've only got 10 minutes. So we're gonna be really fast. I've already come in and I've chosen a little bowl that I'll show you where I got it from because they had a really good selection here. This is up the back. So this is the aquarium store up the back, but all through the front, they have so many plants. It's a bit rainy today, but they've got all of these plants all the way down to the very front where they've got some ponds and stuff set up as well. And they've just got ponds all over this place, everywhere. So they've got a bunch of terrariums in here and a lot that you can buy as well for setting them up. They've got all of the like bowls and stuff that you can get. I had a look at all of the bowls that they've got here and these ones I thought of, they're more kind of like a cylinder, but I think that the round bowl will be the nicest. They had these kind of smaller ones down here, but I opted for the medium sized one, this one here to see how that goes. I think last time I tried a bowl, 
I tried this one and it was too big. So hopefully that medium sized one will be good, which we will go and buy right now. So nice to walk through, it's like a little forest. They've got this beautiful little tank here and what I think is super cute. They've got these little sell shells for sale, but they've got all of these little tiny animals and stuff that you can get to set up like a little terrarium display that's like a, a diorama or like a miniature real life one. I've also got these huge big ponds here. So I got some stuff on my patio pond here. At one point this is where I got the plants for it, just from in here. They've got moss, so there's some fridges up the back here. That's where I got the moss and stuff from. It's so nice, as you can see there's just so much to see. And they do have parking out the front, which is handy too. So you don't have to, there's only a few parks there, uh, but I've been pretty lucky most times that I've come in. But anyways, let's go and buy this before they close because I don't want to hold them up. Mission accomplished. We have got our bowl to put in there. So let's head home and get this in there and see how it looks. Alrighty, so we are now back home with our bowl to try out. Our Tanganyikan tank has cleared up very nicely. So the owner there, I let him know I was filming and told him that it's for a video and that my channel is Katie Cichlids and this shocked me. Then he was like, oh, African cichlids? And I was like, yes. And then it turns out he said that he had Malawi cichlids back in like the 1970s. So there you go. How cool is that? I didn't even think, I didn't expect that at all. But as you can see, these guys are looking much better. But what we're going to do is we're going to head out to the patio pond. Hopefully it's going to be good. I forgot to mention this before too, but the guppies and the mollies are still alive. There's actually a little balloon molly swimming up here now. Last time what happened, if you saw the last video, is I played around with putting this in and the water became very murky. So that's probably going to be similar to what happens today, but I'm going to try and prevent it just a little bit. So I'm just going to turn the filter off for now. Oh my gosh. Last time I tried to do this, I smashed the bowl by accident, like playing around with it in here. So I'm gonna be a lot more careful this time. Let's just gently remove this plant without stirring it up too much, hopefully. Let me just take out that leaf, but you can see a bunch of guppies and stuff all swimming around here. And what we'll also do is I'm gonna grab out, there's a lotus plant in here too, which is what stirred up a lot of the mess. Well, I stirred up the mess, but that contributed. Now I've got a little bit more to play with. A little bit more space and now our pump is off too so i'm even just going to take this out to release the water from in here so for our bowl we have a couple options right so we've got the one the thing that's sitting in here already that is quite oh it will sit lower in that so that means that if we put the bowl in it's going to sit oh it's going to sit lower okay that's actually very handy so that's good for actually keeping the water in there because I do have a shorter one. I've got this little one, but I think that was going to be way too short. Oh my God, the fish are just like swimming everywhere right now. This isn't going to take up as much water as the last one, so it shouldn't be as hard to do, hopefully. So I've just dunked it in, get all of the air out. Now we're just going to lift it over the rim as so, and gently place it down finger is stuck. There we go, that's quite cool. I think that looks quite good and I mean it is going to be a bit harder for the fish to get up in there but I'm sure they'll do it. I guess time will tell, we'll just have to see. We got a little plant back in there. All right, let's just let that sit for an hour or so so it can clear up a little bit and we'll come back out and check on it. Look you can see a minnow is swimming in there. All right, this will be really cool when we have a look when it's cleared up a little bit more. Cool, all righty. So I said I'd leave it for like an hour, but it's been like five hours. I think they're not swimming in there now, but let me give you a look. It looks like it has cleared up very nicely. I, um, I put this little amethyst on there because it's got a flat little top and I'm not going to leave this out there because I don't want to leave it um, in the sun or anything for ages. But I just thought this would be really pretty to put something on there as well, potentially, just to make use of that little like bay that it's got there. And you know how I was saying that they had moss in the fridge at that Mappin's place. So I was thinking even what you could do is you could put some moss on there and maybe move that over so that it runs onto here so that it's always wet. I mean, I don't know how that would look going over it and what it would do for visibility and stuff. But I was just thinking that was just a little idea. Maybe this thing you could do. You can see my very cute little mollies there. I really like the mollies. I'm going to actually get more of those, I think, because they're doing well in there. 
so I'm kind of excited about that. I've just been watching the fish swim around as well and I honestly think it just seems like they are so happy in here. Like you know when you just look at fish and you can kind of get a sense of whether they're happy or not. Like they really seem like they're like playing and stuff like just with the way that they're swimming around and everything and the guppies and the mollies are swimming around together. I think it's really really sweet. I'm definitely keen to do some more videos on this and give you guys some more updates in the morning as well when it's a little bit clearer and everything. It's a bit of a running theme for this one. Now the bowl definitely makes them look bigger, definitely distorts what you can see a little bit, but I think it's really hard to tell. Oh my gosh, that just makes me realize that's why the minnow looked bigger. I feel so silly, I said I thought it had grown, but it's because it was getting distorted by the bowl. But it's really hard to see at the moment what it's actually gonna look like. So the water, the water level is here on the bowl right now. So it's really quite high up. So yeah, I just don't know. That's why like everything that you're seeing, they're actually pretty much below the water, uh, which is making it kind of hard to tell how it would actually look. Yeah, you can see once they get higher up, they don't look as distorted. So I think having that water level a bit lower is probably going to help. Well, let me know what you think about the bowl being here I, and if you like it better than the rectangle one. I still think we have a little ways to go with this, like giving it a black one instead of a white stand to be on and lifting it a little bit higher and then also the water level being a bit lower, then I think it'll look really nice. But I think this bowl has a lot of potential and I think it's going to solve the issue hopefully of the water slowly declining in it. But we shall see. Let me know what you think. And as always, if you like the video, remember to give it a like too. And your comments, I always appreciate reading them a lot as well. So thank you so much to every person who leaves a comment. It really motivates me when I see that. And as well, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel too. A lot of people watch the videos but haven't subscribed. Like I think more than 50%. I'm really trying to get to that 100,000 subscriber mark. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd really appreciate you subscribing. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.